So I want to um, I want to show you some of the benchmarking that we've been doing over in um, IPLD uh, in IPFS land. Um, hold on, just give me a sec. I want to just set this up. All right, is everyone able to see this screen? Yes, maybe, maybe not. Woohoo! Awesome. Uh, cool. So uh, today, uh, so the so. This is actually a story of uh, how something that you uh, start working on in protocol labs uh, in one area could turn out to be super useful to other people. Um, and the person, the our protagonist at the center of the story is actually not me. It is Alfonso, um, uh, who uh, maybe like uh, I guess six months ago. Uh, for research work um, related to transfer speeds in BitSwap, started working on this Beyond BitSwap framework, um, which essentially became a generalized uh, benchmarking framework for measuring transfers of data um, of almost any kind in almost any platform. Um, so this began as a BitSwap benchmark. Um, later, it added GrassSync. Later, uh, it added a version that ran the entire IPFS stack. Um, and then uh, just a couple days ago, uh, it got uh, essentially um, all a whole bunch of libp2p protocols added. It has HTTP, it has HTTP over libp2p, it has raw libp2p. So we now stream all kinds of um, uh, we we all stream all kinds of like non IPFS protocols in here. Um, and uh, we in this 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 repository um, also has like mechanisms for like generating files, um, transferring real data, transferring directories. Um, so it's a really cool way. Way to um, to to do these sorts of benchmark benchmarks, and it you know it, it has uh, sort of like all of the major steps in like a, in like a traditional transfer workflow in our system. So there's a, the process of adding the files into the system, which in the case of like IPFS means con converting them to UNIXFS, converting them to um, you know uh, to IPLD uh, data, and then um, uh, transferring and then serializing them back out to flat files. Um, uh, so this is a really uh, it's a really cool uh, suite of tools. Um, I almost feel like it's grown beyond its name. Um, and uh, and currently, I believe the Ignite team has been using it to um, to do some benchmarking in preparation for some of their work around F3 to make Filecoin uh, super fast uh, when you put the, when you transfer data into Filecoin. Um, and then uh, our team. More recently, uh, we wanted, so, you know, uh, the data systems team has been, um, we basically been uh, trying to take uh, IPLD Prime, which is our brand spanking new, uh, I, well, it's not brand spanking new at this point, but it's our it's our new and super awesome new hotness uh, uh, a version of IPLD as opposed to the old, li the old invested libraries. Um, and we've been trying to get them all throughout IPFS so that we have all the capabilities of IPLD in IPFS. Um, but this entails a whole bunch of changes to our stack. Um, and we want to make sure that when we ship this thing, we don't break IPFS. Um, so um, we've been using this benchmark. And what we've done is we've set up uh, essentially this benchmark to run a version of I our, our current master version of IPFS, our current released version of IPFS, and have it, um, you know, essentially add files, transfer them to another node, and then, um, and then uh, put them back out as a regular file. And then we set up a version that runs in um, that runs uh, with our branches in IPLD Prime and IPFS, and these ver these early versions are really just compatibility versions. We found ways to shim to shim in IPLD Prime without really taking advantage of its capabilities or optimizing around it. Um, uh, but we ran these benchmarks, um, and we've gotten some results. Um, the The benchmarks are test ground benchmarks, so like uh, essentially, if I want to run them, I'm going to all I can I have like. Got some compositions now, um, and we have this directory called IPLD and IPFS. Um, we have a baseline, and we have a composition for um, the, the new version. Um, one of the super cool things about Test Ground is that you can. Sorry if I'm going super fast here, but um, is that you can like basically build a, a, a benchmark where uh, with these uh, tech, these composition files where I don't know if y'all can see this this might not mean anything to the to the folks who aren't uh, 
who don't work with Tescron, but right here, what I'm doing in this is I am actually replacing IPFS with a different uh, commit shell, which allows me to run the version that is updated for IPLD Prime and IPFS. Um, and there's even this other little thing, this like selector thing, which allows us to um, pass in essentially a build tag to go, which is super cool. I just learned how to use it this morning um, because it allows you to use build tags and go to like work with different versions that have breaking changes in their interfaces, which actually uh, we, the latest thing we shipped, we had to do with um, uh, graphics. So that's like, I don't know, I I, I feel like, test. well, I, I could sing TestGround's praises all day. I feel like it's one of the coolest products Protocol Labs has built, not related to the distributed web per se, but still an amazing product. Anyway, so um, yeah, so if I wanted to run this, I would, you know, run my composition here um, and, um, let's go test ground run composition oh my god apparently i i lose my ability to type when people are watching uh IPLD and ipfs yeah and so like that's going to start um and then i uh over here i have my test ground daemon um it's actually handling the request and starting up uh however i was not so foolhardy as to attempt to run a test ground uh test while um on a zoom call um and make you all wait so don't worry <laughs> these have all been run already um anyway so once we got the results um yesterday um, I put together a um, an observable um, uh, uh, repository, I don't know what do you call these repositories, pages, um, and we were able to compare some uh, benchmarks of uh, the old version and the new version. Now you can see uh, what we have here is we have time to add, time to fetch, and time to output. Um, and you can see we're not quite there in terms of everything being the same. But for example, on time to add, we're doing really well. Um, and uh, time to fetch and time to output, we need a little bit of work. Fortunately, um, we did a little bit of uh, looking into what's going on uh, with uh, like why those things might be a little bit slower. Um, and uh, I have a, a hunch as to what those are. Well, okay, I already know, but uh, in any case, um, uh, you can see here that this is loaded with some initial files, but um, you can upload your own results to basically automatically update this graph. So I've gone ahead and run this earlier. Um, and I have a separate run here, um, which is, uh, I believe this is it. Oh, goodness, I hope this is the right version. Let's find out. Uh, I can't remember what my last run was called. I should have called, I should have named it something more. There we are, yes. Yeah, so it turns out that, um, now we still have some unusual results here in the fetch. We're pretty sure this is just garbage collection running because we're transferring a bunch of data. Um, by the way, what we're transferring here is a hundred megabyte uh, directory. It's the like XKCD archive um, that I just like got off GitHub as like a demo. Um, this is probably just garbage collection running. So we are seeing some unusual results where like suddenly we under we like outperform the normal version uh, on one run, but then we underperform it on others. Um, I'm pretty sure this is garbage collection related, but you can see me while our, our, our time to output to a flat file has gotten way better. Um, and the difference here is um, this actually has to do um, with uh, basically there's an extra um, uh, hashing of uh, the blocks um, in the sort of default version of IPLD Prime. Um, so we're, we're basically, when we read blocks out of the block store, we have a, with the, without this sort of like uh, extra thing, without this thing we added, um, we were doing an extra rehash of the block to verify the CID, which is really wonderful uh, if you care about trusting your data. But in the case where we're loading off our own hard drive that we wrote previously, we probably do trust that data anyway. Um, so we don't need to rehash the CID. So makes a big difference when you're transferring big chunks of data. Um, so you can see that, you know, we made a, we, we uh, got a, a big win here um, out of a, a branch that fixes that. Um, and yeah, and it's super cool. We've like, I, you know, I just in um, to, uh, we do have an actually an outstanding problem um, in one of, uh, in our um, actual, uh, in our um, results. Sorry, 
um, in our ad time um, because uh, we've we've been playing around with different uh, protobuf libraries for um, our nodes and we want to use one that's really compatible and really well tuned to the spec but it looks like we have some optimization work um, to do there so um, in any case it's kind of cool though to be able to like run these benchmarks and like get these immediate you know get these really awesome like immediate comparisons and you know across all kinds of different stuff um, and we've run you know we've run the one day I hope to hook this all up so that like you can run it all on test ground as a service and like it'll immediately pull up URL with your latest results there's few few things still to do there but uh, it's still pretty usable so anyway that's my demo yeah uh, cool very cool you kind of got to told the backstory a little bit but what what motivated the thing that Alfonso was first working on I forget what it was called six months ago beyond bit swap yeah yeah so this was originally i mean it was originally designed as a repository to run research experiments on um uh on basically changes to bit swap right um uh, or changes to the general transfer stack of ipfs um and uh and like you can see there's actually still this rfc directory with all these ideas for um improving bit swap and um and you can even see, and there's even some like have implementations um and there's a way to like run these experiments um so it's super cool um but we found that like what like that's what he built and then like over the last like few months when i was doing ipfs work we ended up doing a bunch of refactor work to enable it to support almost any transport um in any scenario and right now we're just doing a one-to-one -one transfer there but like you can mess with all the things you can mess with latency you can mess with bandwidth you can mess with you know whether your disk store is in memory or like a badger um you can mess with how many transfers you're doing between how many transfer nodes it's like it's pretty cool. Like, I mean, I don't know. It's 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 become quite a resource for a number of teams currently. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine awesome. that's very yeah. useful. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Uh, I don't know if that's questions. Anyone? Anyone? Do do do. Healer. Healer. Uh, yeah, and also uh, test ground in general is fantastic. I think everyone that's that's touched it finds it very useful. Um, so that's great. Um, yeah. So our last.